This is Today's Business Leaders, actionable advice from real-world professionals. And now, here's your host, Gabe Arnold. All right, today on the show, I have Scott Thiemann, and we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and investing in yourself and business and life and all sorts of fun stuff. So welcome to the show, Scott. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So to get started, as always, um, I ask my my only scripted question, and that is, when did you first realize that you were an entrepreneur? That is a great question. Um, so... If I could pinpoint it to one defining moment, I would say uh, it was when I was in college, uh, age 21. Um, if you guys remember in 2012, December 21st, 2012, when the world was supposed to end, um, that was actually the day my old world ended and my new entrepreneur world began. No joke, because my friend uh, introduced me to network marketing, MLM, multi-level marketing. And, um, you know, I was going to college exercise science. Let me study or let me say exercise science, get into prosthetics because it's unique, it's niche, and it'll pay a lot of money. So mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be successful financially and you know, have a big life, I guess. Um, but once my friend introduced me to network marketing and we knocked it out of the park in that business for about two and a half years until I realized, oh, my God, what was I doing for two and a half years? Um <laughs> But that was really my awakening to entrepreneurship. And I signed up that day, December 21st, 2012. Old world ended, new world began. That's awesome. And what, um, you don't have to mention the company if you don't want to. What kind of product were you selling in, in network marketing? Yeah, so the company is called Vima. And uh, we were selling uh, mostly energy, like healthy energy drinks, protein powders. But, uh, you know, we, we were selling the dream, really, is what we were doing. Um, and, and that's what uh, I think helped me get really good at sales, at influencing, building a team, things like that. How big of a team did you end up having before you got out of that? So the biggest, uh, at our peak, um, my team was about 1,100 distributors in like 13 countries. Uh, we went to Europe. We had a, a big London team. They're great. Still friends with them till this day. Actually, a lot of the successful like business relationships and friendships I had to this day, I met uh, as being a part of that company and getting around the right people. So it was, and then we had you know many, many, many more customers on top of that. So, so that was the whole company, or that was your downline? Was eleven hundred people? Oh no, that, that was my downline. Wow, that's huge, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got, you know, the, the BMW paid for by the company. And uh, as a 22, 23-year-old, you know, making, it, waking up in my college frat house and looking at my app and, you know, making anywhere from 500 to to $1,000 a week at the time, that's like, oh, my God, the crazy thing Dude. ever. You know, all these idiots <laughs> that were, I was around, and uh, not idiots, they're my friends, but it, it just really uh, helped me understand that, yeah, I, my mental game was on a different playing field uh, from an early age, so I'm yeah. really grateful for that opportunity. And is that what you mentioned earlier in the notes you sent over? That Was that part of door knocking, or was that a different thing? Because I'm always curious about people that have door knocked. No, okay. So if you're open to it, I can kind of take you through my transition of everything I've done and why I'm here now. Yeah, that's, that'd be perfect. Kind of catch us up from... 2012, you decided to become an entrepreneur. You're in network marketing for two years, which I couldn't recommend highly enough because network marketing is amazing sales and recruitment training. I mean, it's such a huge positive experience if you get with a good company. So you do that, but then kind of give us the give us the short history of how how from there to here today. Yeah, so um, I was getting a little burnt out. I, I was with the company for almost three years, and year two. Um, you know, we kind of, I kind of uh, leveled out, um, whatever the word is, hit a plateau, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, and I kind of got sick of being a babysitter because although there is, yeah, it is great. And I do recommend everyone get into network marketing to really, really scale it. You know, you're doing a lot more than just selling and recruiting. Um, but anyway, so um, I started taking a look at the solar industry um, because I love the sales aspect of it. 
and uh, of network marketing. So I wanted to do sales. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm selling, you know, product for 150 a month, $500 up front. Um, the sales process is always the same, right? Prospecting, presenting, um, following up. I think I have it written here on my whiteboard. Qualify, give a demo, make a proposal, close, follow up. So whether you're selling a $1, a $10, a $10,000, or a million dollar product, that process is always the same. So what really appealed to me about solar was, okay, I can go do that same process and make a $1,500 to $3,000 commission per sale and really help someone because it's a great uh, product. Yeah. Um, so I was living in New Jersey at the time. Um, I uh, was in solar from maybe about May 2015 through the end of the year. And then, you know, really hot in the summer, really cold in the winter. So I don't mind knocking on doors, but I was just sick of the sweat equity. And I felt like I was working way too uh, hard and uh, not smart enough. So I got out of that business and uh, then I got into a uh, water business and I was selling a high-end uh, water system called uh, Anagic Kangen Water, if anyone's ever heard of that. Great product, I still use it every day. Um, and I was watching uh, some of my friends have tremendous success in online marketing, like awarded the two comma club tremendous success. Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap, I'm going to networking events, which I still do and are, is still valuable. I'm uh, asking for referrals, which is extremely valuable, still always do it. Um, but I'm working way too hard in that. And I don't have anything cranking over here for online lead gen. So at that point I made a decision, uh, this is mid 2015 to really learn internet marketing, Facebook ads, sales funnels, follow up, you know, everything. Um, and it's still a learning process up until this day. And uh, I just wanted to fill my calendar because, you know, like Grant Cardone says, white space on the calendar is the devil. <laughs> I'm trying to get the devil out of my life. so. <laughs> Um, I learned, uh, internet marketing through, you know, purchasing courses, through just getting around the right people, um, pretty much every which way, uh, trying it, failing, you know, spending $300 on a webinar and realizing that I didn't put the right uh, redirect link on the button. I was like, why am I not getting anything beyond this point in my funnel? Well, I forgot to put the link redirect on the button. So just, I, I got to learn all the stupid crap. Um, and make the mistakes on myself, which is good for my clients. Um, so anyway, I was selling this, this water system for uh, about a year and a half. And um, so I would generate the lead, call the lead, and go do an appointment. But I was like lugging this uh, suitcase full of demo material, which I, I am so gung-ho about Kongen water. And I love it so much that I really loved it for a year or so. And then I got burnt out. Um, and again, it's like, all right, now I'm working smart, generating my leads, but my appointments are dumb because I'm here doing it. I'm right. charming them and showing them why, um, you know, how purchasing this uh, water system could be of service to them, of course, but it, I was still working way too hard. Um, and in that process, uh, I actually picked up a chiropractor to, to run her ads, someone who I had actually met at a networking event. And um, are you a believer in uh, you know serendipity or the law of attraction? Yeah, I'm a huge manifestation person. I don't talk about it a lot, but I totally believe in it. I think people okay. don't have to well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I've manifested uh, free protein powder, uh, new outdoor furniture, um, and something else, which is kind of like insignificant, but still like wow. In the last like two weeks, just because like I've wanted it. Oh, Funnel Hacking Live. I manifested that ticket. I, I actually won it. Um, so lots of cool stuff. And I actually, I actually won a Kong and Water Machine, too, um, <laughs> at their <laughs> convention, $5,000 value. Legit, I, I would sell these for five grand. Uh, but I think the reason why I'm able to manifest uh, things is because, uh, I don't know, well, that's a whole other uh, conversation. Wait, where was I going with this? What were you talking about a minute before? How you got to where you are today. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, yes. So I was like, uh, I was having like a low month and I'm like, I really need to make some money. 
And so I went into this chiropractor who I had met at, a, at networking events a few times. And she hadn't, I hadn't seen her in like, you know, a, a year, at least a year. And I walked in and she didn't even ask me what I was doing there. She's like, hey, how are you? Gives me a hug, this and that. Like, hey, let me show you around. Like, didn't even ask me, hey, what are you doing here? They were like, hey, let me tell you why I stopped in today. I'm like, I actually want to help you grow your business, this, that, and the other. And she's like, oh, really? Um, I actually just, you know, got this thing, this guy like uh, Russell. She's like, she pull, she literally pulls out the ClickFunnels t-shirt. She's like, yeah, I just signed up for ClickFunnels, but I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> nice. Can't make this stuff up. And I was like, I am here to talk to you about that exactly, um, which is really, That's really awesome. funny. Um, <laughs> And that was actually my first client, and she's still with me today. And as of the 20th of this month, she'll be with me a full year, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And, and we're getting her business really, really amazing results. And um, I was still selling the Anatra Kongan water, and um, I had this one client, and you know, automatically being paid every month to serve the client and help them grow their business. Um, and then about November, this past November, 2017, it kind of hit me like, holy shit, why aren't I putting a bigger emphasis on this? Because, you know, the lifetime value of this client that I sold one time that I'm helping them to grow, I'm not selling them a water system or, or solar panels, which believe me, I still think people need those things. But uh, the best yeah. thing to sell somebody is, hey, let me help you grow your business. Like that's easy to buy into, the easiest to buy into in my opinion. Um, yeah. And it really hit me like last November, like, holy shit, why am I not putting all my focus here in, in growing this thing? And um, that's what I, I pretty much uh, did uh, in November is made that decision. Um, and now we're up to 10 clients um, all in the medical space. Um, and I just brought on um, someone to do all the fulfillment to my team, very skilled guy that I've known for many years. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. That's how I got to where I am here. I feel like I love the laptop lifestyle of it where actually I love to, I love the sales game the best, right? Yeah. So I love how I can meet, connect with somebody and serve them, sell them, selling and serving, uh, do a sales process on the front end, uh, manage that client, build, continue to build a relationship with them, and then get paid over and over and over again. So it's it's doing the easiest hard work and the model is phenomenal. It's a recurring revenue model and all, and all the sales I've done other than network marketing, it, there's been no you know recurring revenue. So I've really loved the power of the recurring revenue model of the agency. And if you could do good work and if you're good with people and if, like sales training, that's a big thing that I differentiate my agency with, you know, cause there's so many, agency owners, right? We got to, mm -hmm. what, what makes you different? Um, so in, in some things that we're implementing with the staff, it's really helping them to, when they call those leads to get them in and then get them signed on as patients. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the part. Mark, you can generate, generate tons, tons of leads with your poll. It doesn't matter if you can convert them. So if you don't provide backend support for follow-up and sales and like you, if you're not supporting that, or offering it, they can take it or leave it, but you should at least be offering it because if you don't provide that, then all the leads in the world won't solve that problem. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. There's one, that I, I think we met when you were doing the Kangen water because I that's I thought that's what you were doing. And uh, that's been a couple of years since we started connecting on Facebook. And one thing that's always stood out to me, and maybe this was, maybe there's a strategy or approach or something behind this, or maybe it's just your thing and either way is fine. but. I've always your like genuine care and like energy and like desire to help people always comes through like in chat or when we ran, ran into each other at funnel hacking, like you just have such a positive energy about you that it's like it overflows into everything you do, not just in person or like I can obviously sense it now face to face with you, but even in like chat messages and stuff. So is that something that you just kind of naturally do or is it something that you learned along the way? I mean, what you see is what you get. This is, this is who I am. And uh, I think anyone in, in the business world who isn't this way or at least some variation of this way, um, dude, what are you doing, man? 
mean, how do you expect to build a business or a good life? I, I mean, I genuinely, yeah, I genuinely give a shit about my clients and my family and my friends and my life and you know the things that I'm involved with. Because mm-hmm. how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So, and and it, here here's another thing, and I don't know if this is kind of unrelated or off. No, go it. ahead. <laughs> I joined a uh, like a boot camp fitness class down here, and I, I went to some like, in New Jersey, and uh, you know it's tough. Like I really they push you, and I push myself. And I always think like when I'm really like pushing myself and doing these, you know, ridiculous exercises, like, <laughs> all right, you just closed a $6,400 deal and you're telling me you can't do freaking 10 more burpees. Like if you can convince, serve, demonstrate to somebody that you can help them and they invest $6,400 in you and your business and yourself, there's no reason in the world why you can't do 10 more burpees right now like doing that is way more harder than 10 more burpees um i don't know how that may be related to what you're saying but no dude i really i genuinely do care and i feel like so many people don't and there's so many scammy you know shithead uh marketers out there that um you know having this approach um makes you stand out so it's it's who i am yeah uh do i strategically do it. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, this is who I, I also like, I'm so on when I'm on that I'm so off when I'm off. That makes sense. Like, I like to have my, I like to have fun, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm so on when I'm on that I want that to, I want that to be demonstrated to the client for sure. Yeah. No, it, it, it totally shows. And I just wanted to explore a market. That's definitely something that makes a huge difference. And you can, people can tell when you're bullshitting them. They can tell when you care. Like it's just in anything you're doing, whether it's three lines in chat to somebody or it's sitting down face to face or whatever, everybody can tell. Um, yeah. It just super shows. And I, I love how you brought up like working out and like how that feels difficult in the moment. <clears throat> but what I've found is, and one of the reasons I love it and I'm like, I'm always working to like try to do more or get, get into it more and like I'll probably this year hire a personal trainer. We'll see. It's like on my list of things to do, but when you can push yourself physically, it's kind of cyclical and like, it's just a cycle. Like if you can push yourself harder than you've gone before physically, then the mental stuff becomes easier. And then when you're good at the mental stuff, just like you said, then it's easier to push yourself a little bit farther physically because you're like, Oh, well I can do that. Of course I can do this. And it just kind of puts you at a different playing field and you have a different edge when you're physically engaged and active and that's why especially as entrepreneurs and especially as laptop entrepreneurs as he's kind of said we've got to get out and do something physical otherwise the stress and sitting and just everything will kill you (laughs) yeah i'm I'm actually at my stand-up desk right now so uh, this is uh i mean yeah i've always been a big uh fitness person i've done all the diets all the exercise programs and that's one of the reasons I love working in the medical space. And I tell them, like, look, I went to school. Well, if it comes up, hey, I got a BS, which stands for bullshit and exercise science. So that's part of the reason why I'm in this field. I love it. But, um, yeah, getting your heart rate up is so important. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you touched on earlier kind of as you t- told a little bit more of your story, like the game-changing difference between one-off projects or one-off commissions and reoccurring revenue. So what's been, and I, I've like really experienced that four or five years ago too. And it's, it's it's life changing. I feel like, yeah. And you're into it five or six months now. Yeah. Where we're at um, from November when you said what's been, or no, you, you've been in a year. I'm sorry. Cause you, you had the one client for a year. Right. So what's been the biggest change business wise? And what's been the biggest change personally now that you've got this reoccurring revenue model starting to crank? Um, well, I was able to invest into a business coach, um, and I was able to have, you know, my biggest month ever because of it. Actually, I used OPM anyway, but, um, you know, it, it, it allowed me to feel more comfortable in making you know, a five figure investment in myself. Yeah. Um, which pretty much gave a double, like what I invested, I earned that back and then that again month one, month one being with this guy 
something magical happens when you invest money, right? Um, yeah. Now, it's interesting, and if you're if you want, I'll talk about my sales process a little bit too. So my recurring yeah. revenue isn't that high yet because again, I've really kind of just gotten this whole thing really going in the last two three months. But one of the things I've learned, which anyone who's listening in the agency space, which I highly recommend, is I've sold a lot of my deals three months up front. And what I'll do is I'll discount it a little bit, like 10 or 15%, just to have this huge injection of cash into the business. Um, but also because, you know, I'll enroll them in the thinking of, hey, if I come to you and I have pain, and I want to get out of pain, and I say, can you do it in two weeks? No. And no, that's ridiculous. Can you do it in one month? It's ridiculous. Can you do it in maybe, hey, wait, we put you on a six-month care plan. I'm like, exactly. Well, guess what? It's the same thing with marketing. So we're going to follow a system that's proven to work for all of our clients. Me personally, and of course, there's always attrition. And then I'll get back to your question. There's always attrition, right? Yeah. The only time I've lost clients is because their inability – to close uh, new patients, new deals fast enough at revenues big enough to justify keeping me around. And since then, my fee has uh, almost doubled. Investment has almost doubled. Um, but now that I have some recurring revenue and large injections of cash, um, I definitely sleep better at night. Uh, I definitely uh, go out to eat more freely. There's a really great... Uh, all you can eat sushi buffet around here. Mm, I'll have to so, cut that up with you when I come down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as far as business wise, uh, I want to keep growing. Like I said, I'm bringing on somebody that's mm. going to be on fulfillment. Um, I'm going to continue to, you know, offload things that um, I need to spend my time selling and prospecting, mostly selling because that is my strong suit and that's where I get best help with my clients. Um, so it allowed business wise, it allows me to offload certain things. And then personally, it just allows me to live this, you know, bigger life. Um, I'm not necessarily motivated by like a nice watch or a nice car. Like, sure, I'll get that when the time is right. Yeah. Um, I'm more so motivated by, you know, creating something cool, something special, really. Mm -hmm. Like there's no better feeling when the client's like, Hey, we're having our busiest week ever. We, my one thought we had our busiest Friday ever and they signed five new patients uh, last month. And by the way, all these people who get caught up, like for a doctor signing five new patients that are investing, you know, 2,900 over a year. Um, that's a lot. Like realistically, you'll talk to probably a lot of Facebook marketers. Um, first of all, they focus on leads, not number of new patients. Um, but that's a lot because that didn't exist. If I'm not in the picture, that that additional, what is it? Yeah. 15 grand in revenue doesn't exist. Yeah. And he's investing, you know, 10% of that. So right. an X return. That's huge. <laughs> and I like what you said too. I, I did a live about this this morning, focusing on the numbers that really matter. You didn't. You didn't just say, "Oh, I sent them three hundred leads, or I sent them fifty leads," because it doesn't matter. You sent. You said they got five new clients, paying clients, right? <laughs> and it, it's it's really easy in anything in life, but especially with digital and agency and marketing and all this, it's really easy to focus on vanity stats and things that don't matter, right? And then you wonder why you're not feeling fulfilled. You're wondering why your clients aren't hanging around. It's just because you're not focusing on the actual true thing you should be focusing on. Right. And I explained to this, I, I really hammer this. And now at my top tier level, I am offering branding like website and all this stuff. But um, I'm like, look, you've probably spoken to guys like me before, right? Yep. Uh, and you probably, I had a, I have a guy who was spending what he's now spending on me, he was spending on branding content per month. And it was really good branding content. Mm -hmm. And what I try to explain to these medical professionals and just, you know, people in general, I've worked with uh, some coaching students, I guess you could call them. What I try to get across them is like, look, the branding is going to make you feel warm and fuzzy. It's going to make the people who view it feel warm and fuzzy. But there's not going to be a correlation to ROI. So... 
even if it takes my stuff a month or two or even three, and it hasn't ever taken three, but maybe one or two months mm -hmm. um, to get ROI, that's the focus. That's the conversation. Um, so I want to take you out of warm and fuzzy la la land and take you into ROI business land. And uh, it's crazy because they'll spend the same money completely differently. They'll spend six months of uh, warm and fuzzy branding money and feel great, and then one or two months of direct response money and be like, okay, what's happening? Uh, what are the numbers, this and that? And like, good, that's, that's kind of how I want you operating. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting, it's really interesting. Yeah, and both are really important because your, your branding makes your direct call to actions more effective. And obviously, you know, because people will have some experience with you, but you can't just brand unless you're a huge mega corporation, you can't just brand. You have to drive specific call to action and actually bring people in as new customers, like you said. Right, right. And actually, that, so that's kind of, I'm glad you, you touched on that. Branding is important. And so for a lot of my clients, we do video ads. And again, what's going to separate me from all these guys and gals in the marketplace? Yeah. Um, and as you know, or, or the listeners or whoever may listen to this knows or soon will know, with, with video, you can retarget based on if they watch three seconds, 10 seconds, 25, 50, 75, 95%, which is really powerful. So it gives the advertiser an edge as well. Um, and I think I'm going to start actually leaning more on the branding so that they could buy my top tier package. But it's the same conversation. Like, look, I want to take care of your warm and fuzzy for your, for your mental and for your clients. That yeah. way when they see your direct response, they're more likely to say yes. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it totally, totally goes hand in hand. So for being, um, I'll be 36 this year, how old are you? 26. Yeah, that's what I thought. So for being a decade younger than me, you're pretty sophisticated and you have a really strong handle on sales and business. What's been the, like, what are some highlights of things that have moved you forward? I don't know, you mentioned college, um, which may or may not <laughs> be part of it. You've done the network marketing thing. Like for somebody that's coming on and being like, I want to take it to the next level and I want to be where you're at, Scott, what are the things business wise that have moved you forward the most? Because you are light years ahead of where I was. Wow. First of all, I appreciate that. Um, well, yeah, two things I, I would say, uh, network marketing. I think everyone should start in a network marketing company, low barrier cost to entry. Um, uh, and, Whatever you put into it, you'll get out of it. So if you're trying to build a big business like what I was doing, you could really get a lot out of it. You gotta get, you gotta also get around the right people. Um, mm -hmm. But if I were to boil it down to two, it'd be my experience in uh, network marketing, which got me around the right people on this continued, you know, quest of let me get around the right people, which is part of the reason I relocated here to South Florida, um, and also Grant Cardone. Gotcha. Grant Cardone. I actually met him the other day in Delray Beach. I think I saw that photo, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. He put on his uh, IG story. He's like, we going to buy some real estate today. We going to Miami and Delray Beach. I'm like, holy shit, he's coming to Delray Beach. So I'm like out by the pool looking at my phone. And uh, I'm like, and then he tagged that he was in a restaurant like two minutes away. So I immediately like jumped up from the pool, put a nice shirt on like pretend to walk by I'm like, Oh my God, 10 X fam. What's up? And I got to talk to him for like two, three minutes, but, um, uh, I've been on Grant Cardone sales training, uh, since 2013. Uh, I'm on his sales training university. I highly recommend everybody get on that. Uh, he just did two really great live streams, uh, advanced negotiation, negotiation and advanced closing. Um, and you know, you gotta know how to sell. That's another thing. And again, selling is serving. So whenever I say sell, if you're like uncomfortable with that, which again, I know like, what would you say the percentage of the digital marketers are uncomfortable with selling? 95%. 95%, okay, I was gonna say maybe 80. Yeah, but okay, let's call it 95%. All stats are made up, remember that, but I would say 95. <laughs> yeah, 95. So if you're watching this right now or listening to this and you're uncomfortable with selling, here's what Grant Cardone says and here's what I, come to believe you're screwed up in the head you're screwed up here's why everything is sales everything is sales and recruiting where do you want to go to eat tonight I want to go here 
sold. Uh, let's get on this thing. You sold me into the idea of this. I really sold myself, but there was a sale that happened, right? So selling is serving. So if you are uncomfortable taking money from people, um, you're not sold enough on what you do. That's the problem. You're the problem. So you need to get a really, really strong foundation on sales. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, it's a huge mental game, right? Number one, but there's also a lot of uh, strategies and tactics and word tracks and things you should say, and shouldn't say, and, um, questions to ask and to do all these things at certain times. That's a huge part of it. So um, if you really want to be successful in anything, you really need to learn the sales game. You, you have to, it's a must. So for me, it's been learning the sales game, finding a mentor, Grant Cardone, um, and just diving into his material. Um, I mean, Gabe, do you, do you, uh, I follow him. I'm, I'm glad you brought him up. Cause I, I, two things. I think he's totally right with what he's, what you just said. And like the approach of, you know, serving, selling is serving. I totally agree with that. The thing that I think sometimes gets lost in the mix with a guy like him is he talks about money so much that I, and it's his leading edge and I understand why he does it, but he talks about money so much that sometimes the rest of what I, what you're saying, he says, and things I've read in his books and I'm not in his courses, but I've read a couple of his books and I follow him enough to see what he's throwing off. Sometimes he, he over highlights on that. And I know it's to attract people and bring them in and then teach them what he's really about. But sometimes it just sounds all about money. And I don't like that because <clears throat> that's not, actually what we're supposed to be working on <laughs> money is a byproduct of doing the right thing right so actually he did a live stream that i paid 49 dollars for this past saturday all about mm -hmm. money and what he was talking about was your number one goal as a salesperson business person entrepreneur is to increase your income number one all about money number mm -hmm. two decrease your tax liability number three is discipline your spending habits and then number four invest your free cash flow so it was when he talks about money i think it's more so how to manage it how to keep it and how to control it yeah. correctly but uh so for everyone it's going to be different right whether it's brian tracy whether it's uh russell brunson whether it's dan kennedy um right. you know everyone's going to vibe with their person differently for me, and I told him when I met him in person, like you've had such an impact, and uh, I just want to, I just want to stop by and say thank you because it's seriously changed my life. Yeah. Um, and again, whether I was selling solar still, Kong and water still, or marketing and advertising, if you don't know the sales game, you you're out. Yeah, you're, you're done. <laughs> I, to I totally agree with like, I mean, Mark Cuban saying I say all the time, you know, sales cures all, and that's. That's why I like what Grant Cardone does, and like I like I like his motivational, and I like what he pushes there. And but that's the one part that just doesn't really resonate with me is his focus or what he talks about is sometimes too far over the edge for me about money. Not because I hate money, I love making money, but I like I like how Russell. If you really follow Russell, he ties it into the good that he's doing in the world, and I don't always hear about Grant Cardone's good he's doing in the world, which uh, is just but I know they share a stage and I know they're buddies and all that. So it's just, it's just what I'm seeing. That's why I'm bringing it up. I could be totally missing a huge part of what he does. Yeah. He was talking about how he donated uh 350 K to his church uh, on his podcast or on his live stream. So uh, we don't have to go off too much on a tangent, no, he's good. That, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's a good dude, man. You should, you cool. should. No, and, and he's definitely had a really huge positive impact on me and my business. I mean, just like reading the 10X rule and stuff like that. I mean, it makes you think different and play at a different level. So that's totally. And and I agree with what you said, too. And, and that's what everybody needs to pay attention to. They're going to find one or two people in person or virtual mentors. Like I, I would call him like one of your virtual mentors. It's like it's not like you've hired him yet. You probably will down the road. Um, but you know, you'll find the people that you really resonate with and only follow a few. Don't try to do what all the gurus do because then you'll never get anywhere. So it's definitely, <clears throat> I totally agree with that. Right, right. And then I think another important thing too is uh, <clears throat> really be committed to what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a saying like you can't, the man who chases two rabbits catches neither. So I don't, I believe that to an extent, you know, because I still like earn ClickFunnels commission. 
that was the previous opportunity. And I, I want to continue to get that up and things like that. Um, but I think having a laser focus on what you're doing, like don't try to sell a Facebook ads course and build an agency and do something else and do something else. Like stick to one flow, get that flow gushing. And then, then you can do more. Yep. Yeah, you're totally right. And it's hard. It's really hard to stay focused. Um, I had, I think it was, I think it was Jamie J that was on the show the other day mentioned this and I don't remember where he got it, but he's like, um, Oh, it was by the guy that wrote getting things done. Is that David Allen? Forget. But in that book, I guess he says, I haven't read it in a while, but Jamie brought up, he's like, you can hold four things in your head tops. And if you try to do more than that, then you'll lose focus and you won't be effective. And that's probably even too many, but <laughs> you can hold at most like four major things. And, so you asked earlier before we jumped on, Scott, like, why did I start the show or what's the point? And I, I started it for one main reason. And then I was like, well, I should probably make it dual value. And I'll touch on that in a minute. But I was like, I just want to hang out with like-minded entrepreneurs and get to know them. Because I live in the middle of nowhere uh, for personal reasons with my family and stuff that I couldn't move to where I want to go. I have too big of a family to move all my siblings and everybody somewhere else. So I'm here in the middle of nowhere, but I want to hang out with entrepreneurs um, like I did when I lived in the city or like that. So I started for that reason. But I was like, man, we're going to have a bunch of aw awesome conversations. So why don't we share that with the world? And that's the point of having the podcast. And that, you know, is something that more and more I try to pay attention to is, yes, you have to focus in. I don't know if it's single, singly, like you said, but it's definitely a mo You definitely have to have a high level of focus on a few things at most. Right. But when I'm doing anything, I'm trying to dual purpose it and dual value it. And that way, when I built, a sales training for my team. I don't know how long ago now, maybe a year or six months ago. Now I built it with the purpose of my team needed it. And I wanted them to go through the same sales process that I use, but then I made it available publicly. So it's like, well, if, if you sell, who cares? And it's actually turned into a great revenue, you know, producing course for me. Um, and so that's, you can kind of going back to, you said you, you can focus on, one or two or a few things, whatever that is, but make sure that they're all in alignment and they're all kind of moving you in the same direction. You'd have a hard time, like you said, becoming the course expert and no doing all courses while building an agency, while being a personal coach. Like, it, like it's not that you couldn't do it, but that's a huge spread of different focuses, right? Yeah. So t totally agree with that. And, and say, I would, you know, completely agree with what you were talking about earlier and how we got on the, Grant Cardone is that if you can't, if you don't learn to sell, you're going to struggle in business period. And I think that as the founder owner, you probably need to be personally responsible for all the sales until you get to, you know, mid six figures, like four or 500,000. Right. I think you're going to be heavily involved. You may have a team, you may have support or whatever, but when you cross a million dollars, you can probably step away and hire a sales team only if you really learn sales yourself and if you understand the process and you have a whole full sales model, but it's just such a, such a key part of it. Yeah. I mean, right now I want, I exactly, I, I want to do all the sales. I want everything going through me because a lot of, a lot of it too is, especially with the agency model. And this is something I'm working on um, is setting the proper expectation about how the relationship will go and how the relationship will be managed between you and the client. Yeah. Um, that is something that I am continuing to refine, um, and that's really important. And the way that you sell, you can do a lot of that in you know um, your case study, or like however your your funnel, your case study, call one, call two, close call, collect the money call, you know however you do it. Um, and a lot of that stuff is intentional. And of course, to go back to what you're asking earlier, I, I mean I'm always high energy. I'm always like this is yeah. is what you get. But uh, when it's coming to the sales process and some of the things, of course, so it's scripted. It's, things are done intentionally. Yeah. All from the, again, all from the place of service. Like, I mean, I and and can I can I share some golden nuggets? With yeah, you? absolutely. Okay, cool. So one of the best ways to um, serve people with advertising, you know, I was. 
negotiating with somebody over 2500 a month not negotiating but just like you know helping him to make that decision I'm like well let me ask you well let, let's put it this way doc i don't want you to think of this as 2500 a month i want you to think of this as thirty thousand dollars for the year you stick with me for a year we're generating good results you're going to invest thirty thousand dollars in growing your business okay when was the last time you spent thirty thousand dollars what I do? I made the problem bigger than it was. Now we're not on a $2,500 problem. Now we're on a $30,000 holy shit problem. So he goes, oh, well, you know, I just bought a million dollar house. I'm like, okay, million dollar house. I'm like, How much is that million dollar house going to make you? Nothing. It's going to cost me this. It cost me that. And I'm like, okay. So $2,500 a month. We're going to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C for the deliverables. DC, then I asked it. You always want to ask people three. Now, by the way, I have not closed this guy yet. Yeah. With some of these docs and some of these bigger, this is like a big practice. Oh, I'm hiring this guy. I'm firing this guy. I'm bringing on this department. I'll get it. But anyway, um, then I asked him three yes questions. Hey, do you think that I could help you? Yes. Do you think that the, what I've shown you so far could work for you in your business? Yes. And then some, some other, I forget the exact other guess question, but just, you know, so those are three really, really, or two really, really great tips that I just, uh, some value models for you guys. Uh, number one, you want to make the problem bigger than it is and then bring them back to where, where you're at. Right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Oh, 2,500 shit. We we're just talking about 30 grand. Um, and another thing I learned is, uh, you know, when you ask tough questions, that is the easiest way to get into rapport with somebody. When you're probing and asking tough questions, it's almost like you get this massive weight like off your shoulders. Like, oh, thank God you said that or asked me that. And it's actually a great way to connect with people right away. And a lot of people are, again, screwed up in the head about that. Like, mm -hmm. talk about the elephant in the room because it's going to help you 100%. Yeah, and it really can elevate your authority in the situation because if you can ask that question, it doesn't even matter if you know the answer, to be honest. You sh I mean, you may know the answer, you may not, but if you can ask the hard question, everybody will look up to you. It's very interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely, build, it definitely helps your figure of authority, um, expert status uh, thing, yeah. you know, for sure. Um, I'm really curious about the positioning and the reasoning behind why you would blow up the investment to be 12 times bigger than most people would pitch it. So you, normally people would say it's 2,500 and they may have a strategy to get there, but you blew it up to be much bigger. Can you dig into that more? Yeah. So this is actually straight off, uh, uncle G GC All right. negotiation. So here's the thing. Um, I tell people, I want you to be with me for a long time. We're going to help you grow your business. Um, a year, 18 months, Look, if you're with us for two years, we probably didn't do a good job. So in my head, and who knows, maybe my first client will be with me another year. Probably. She's killing it. Um, but anyway, so part of the reason why I do that is because when you make the problem bigger than it is, you get them to realize how insignificant the investment or the problem or the money issue may be at, at present, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, it's also like let's think long term. How much money is your business going to make this year of? million bucks. Well, if I help your business make a million bucks, would you pay $30,000 to make a million bucks? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because you're making the problem bigger than it is and then bringing them back to the line. Like Jordan Belfort talks about like straight line persuasion. Um, I'm not really a fan of that. But um, I think it's like why Russell Bronson does the stack, you know? It's like, okay, it's an $11,000 value and whoosh, just kidding, it's 997. These are a MasterCard, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the same idea. Okay. I do want them thinking long term. I do want them thinking your patients, some patients are with you for 10 years getting wellness care. Maybe you'll be with me a while. And guess what? Your campaign, your deal, but your deal is long term care. Mm -hmm. So, 30,000, that's the big picture, 2,500. Let's rock and roll. However, I tr I uh, I've sold two twenty five hundred three months up front, but uh, I again I discounted to uh, 
about 15 it's like 12 and a half percent i don't know so mm-hmm. 6400 they say they save 1100 dollars. that gets them invested with me and uh i think if you're in the agency space you really want to look into this um and consider it because it's interesting two things number one it gets them committed to you but also just as interesting even though you have a big injection of cash now you have no more revenue from that client for three months. So what does that mean? It means you got to go fill your pipeline again right away. Hmm. Uh, you're also not worrying and dealing with these, you know, crapshoots of people like, oh, I'll give it a month. Like, I don't, dude, if you're going to, if we're going to take the time and do all the onboarding and all the training and all of this and all of that, and you're only going to give me a month, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> that's very interesting. I like what you said there. It makes you think, it makes them think long term. And then it also forces you to keep active and like get new deals in the door. And you have the benefit of having the cash up front, which if you're good with your money, which you should be, then you'll be, you'll be in good shape. So that's a pretty interesting strategy. It makes sense now. Yeah. Very cool. Well, um, what's, if people want to work with you, um, obviously you, you help the medical, you know, community with, with new getting new customers every month, which is awesome. Is there anything else that you help other entrepreneurs with or any, anywhere else people can hang out with you? Um, I mean, it's mostly like consulting as well. Uh, sales training, scripting, consulting. Um, maybe, I mean, I'll probably come out with some sort of course in the future. Um, but that'll be like, you know, two years plus in the future. Yeah. When I really like completely crush the game. I mean, I'm still like a little, you know, as Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank would say, I'm, I'm just a, a little cockroach still, you know, <laughs> um, trying to get the Um, uh, But, you know, progressing up in the world here. So if people want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me on Facebook, just uh, facebook.com slash scott.theman, T-H-E-A-M-A-N. That's the best way to reach me. You can follow me on Instagram. Uh, at Scott T man nine one. Um, and we can have a chat. If you know, chiropractors, medical spas, plastic surgeons, or if you are one of them, um, or if you'd like to refer one, we also have a really cool, uh, referral program. So I would be very interested in talking to you. We do, you know, free consultation. Everything's free up until, uh, they pay us, um, strategy sessions. Nice. Um, Cause think about it. I'll go through all this with a doctor, and they'll be so mind blown. Hey, how come no one's ever told me that before? And all of the marketers who do and don't do a good job know this. They know this. But I need to explain it to. I need to talk to you. We need to get on the same level. I just need to explain it to you properly. Ask you a ton of questions. Draw Mm -hmm. it out. Boom. So having them involved in the process too, making them think, oh shit, that's my idea. I think there's power in that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, I will, um, we'll drop some links in the show notes, of course. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in and thank you so much for being on Scott today. Uh, we will, I'd love to have you back on soon. So just keep us posted on your progress and you're definitely rising quickly to the top. So it's been fun to hang out with you and watch what you're up to. Thanks a lot, Gabe. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And yeah, we'll talk soon. All right. Sounds good. You've been listening to Today's Business Leaders with Gabe Arnold. Remember to subscribe on iTunes. For more information, visit todaysbusinessleaders.com. Yeah.